Good morning, and welcome to Morning Prayer for Holy Thursday, April 9th, 2020. I am Deacon Dennis Holly from Sacred Heart Catholic Church in Richmond, Virginia. Let us pause for a moment to recognize that we are in the presence of God. Let us begin as we begin all our prayers. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will proclaim your praise. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 80. O shepherd of Israel, hear us. You led Joseph's flock. Shine forth from your cherubim throne upon Ephraim, Benjamin, Manasseh. O Lord, rouse up your might. O Lord, come to our help. God of hosts, bring us back. Let your face shine on us and we shall be saved. Lord God of hosts, how long will you frown on your people's plea? You have fed them with tears for their bread an abundance of tears for their drink. You have made us the taunt of our neighbors, our enemies laugh us to scorn. God of hosts, bring us back. Let your face shine on us and we shall be saved. You brought a vine out of Egypt. To plant it, you drove out the nations. Before you cleared the ground, it took root and spread through the land. The mountains were covered with its shadow, the cedars of God with its bows. It stretched out its branches to the sea, to the great river it stretched out its shoots. Then why have you broken down its walls? It is plucked by all who pass by. It is ravaged by the boar of the forest, devoured by the beasts of the field. God of hosts, Turn again, we implore, look down from heaven and see. Visit this vine and protect it, the vine your right hand has planted. Men have burnt it with fire and destroyed it. May they perish at the frown of your face. May your God be on the man you have chosen, the man you have given your strength, and we shall never forsake you again. Give us life that we may call upon your name. God of hosts, bring us back. Let your face shine on us, and we shall be saved. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our reading this morning is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Hebrews. We see Jesus crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death, that through God's gracious will he might taste death for the sake of all men. Indeed, it was fitting that when bringing many sons to glory, God, for whom and, who, and through whom all things exist, should make their leader in the work of salvation perfect through suffering. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning I'll reflect on our psalm, Psalm 80. Have you prayed in times of desperation? What were the results of those prayers? Psalm 80 was a prayer of desperation but not despair. The tone of the psalm revealed a weak Judea ravaged by its neighbors. This was the situation during the reign of the king of Judea, King Josiah. The Assyrians had swept away the northern kingdom of Israel. The southern kingdom of Judea had been whittled away to the city-state of Jerusalem. The priest Canner cried out to Yahweh, so he would restore the former glory of the kingdom. 
In the beginning of the psalm, the cantor implored the shepherd of Israel to reveal himself to the areas of the northern kingdom of Israel and some of the lost regions of Judea. Notice revelation, power, and salvation were synonymous. As Yahweh revealed himself, he would show his power and save his people. After these petitions, the cantor sang the refrain, Lord, restore your people and let your face shine upon us. Psalm 80 stated the condition of the people. They cried tears of lamentation that were so common. They acted as daily food. They lamented, why us, O Lord? The nation was weak, its reputation was ridiculed. Why us, O Lord? In our psalm, the analogy of the vineyard described the activity of the God and the glory of Israel. God brought the people out of Egypt and planted them in Canaan. The nation grew in power and prestige. It reached its height under Solomon and described the downfall of the nation whose enemies attacked and ravaged the land. The psalm ended with a prayer for restoration and returned to the theme of revelation and power. O oh Lord, return and fight against our enemies. Part of that restoration was a strong monarchy. In response to the restoration, the cantor promises the fidelity of the people. Psalm 80 was a prayer that grew out of desperate times but not times of despair. It is not an inward reflection on hopelessness, but a cry to the Lord for help. The psalm looked forward to better days when the Lord would restore his people. We too look forward to times of happiness post COVID-19. We look forward to the return of our Lord in glory. How can times like our Holy Week restore your spirit? Our antiphon for the Canticle of Zechariah is, I have longed to eat this meal with you before I suffer. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all those who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies free to worship with him, with him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness in the shadow of death. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I have longed to eat this meal with you before I suffer. Our petitions this morning, our response will be, Guide us to your truth, O God. Ever-present God, Without beginning or end, you fashion all humankind in your image and likeness. We pray, guide us to your truth, O God. Clothe Pope Francis, bishops, and all church ministers with holiness and every gift of the Spirit. Guide us to your truth, O God. Impel your church to seek out the poor, the lost, and the hurting. Guide us to your truth, O God. Inspire all who lead and serve your church in worship, worship during the Triduum. Guide us to your truth, O God. Bless our sacred heart, 
parish. It's priests, deacons, staff, ministers, all our parishioners, and especially those are sick who are passed away. Guide us to your truth, O God. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And our prayer for protection in time of pandemic. O Mary, you always brighten our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you. Health of the sick who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain while remaining steadfast in faith. O loving Mother, you know what we need and we are confident you will provide for us as at Cana in Galilee. Intercede for us with your Son, Jesus, the Divine Physician, for those who have fallen ill, for those who are vulnerable, and for those who have died. Intercede also for those charged with protecting the health and safety of others, and for those who are tending to the sick and seeking a cure. Help us, O Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father, and to do as we are told by Jesus, who took upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows, so as to lead us through the cross to the glory of the resurrection. Amen. May we prefer nothing to the love of Christ, and may he bring us together to everlasting life. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please have a blessed day as we begin our triduum. Take care of yourself and take care of each other. And may God be blessed.